live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of the Training Floor with your humble host, Angie Barbosa and Jeremy Alexander Newsom, giving you another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food, reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. Very interesting day in the markets, ladies and gentlemen, for sure. Let's check out, shall we, uh, some the broader market spectrum. Here's a DIA. And I'm just gonna start off with saying this is a bearish gap. Okay, this is a pretty bearish gap. Um, the fact that we had a really, really good volume bar come into play really kind of makes me anticipate uh, a little bit of this action going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of draw this trend line uh, into here. I think I'm gonna make it a different color just so it kind of stands out to you guys, maybe a hot pink or something. But realistically, in my opinion, I think we're gonna kind of stick with this uh, kind of angle probably until you know at least February, maybe a little bit langer, later, and do something very similar. So we gapped down, we did trap some people, but this is a very congested phase in here. And these volume bars, this one, this one, this one, says to me that there's a lot of buying pressure coming on the DIA. So if you dig it triggered into protective puts, I really don't think that's the worst thing in the world. You know, I, I don't think that's something to be afraid of because it appears to me that uh, you know we have some good volume, but yeah, we could do this, do this, and continue. And that's entirely plausible. So if you got triggered into your protective puts, don't sweat it, don't worry about it, um, don't falter, You know, trade your plan, do what you gotta do, and let's see how we break out of this little triangle. I'm, I'm anticipating this, but we could easily do this, and if we do this, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna hold on to those protective puts. Um, and you're gonna wanna be happy that you bought them. So if we're in them, I think we hold on to them. Our stop is where, you know, it's uh, 170, 184. So if we hit that, we'll get, up, we'll get out of any long positions that you might be in on the DIA. And right now, I think we're just kind of waiting for some congestion. Same, similar thing with the Qs, right? Gap down, coming back down to the support, higher low, uh, I'm sorry, relative lows, lower highs, trading sideways, uh, getting some bullish buying pressure with a nice little lower shadow and uh, kind of the same thing for the SPY. So here's your SPY. It uh, came within just a few pennies. So the low of the day, got to change this again. Probably think I, I don't know. I, I still don't know how I could save that, but I don't think I've been pulling it up. Well, the low of the day um, was very, very close to the trigger. I don't know if you got triggered in or not. Low of the day was 201.74. So if you had your 201.69 uh, injury for protective puts, we haven't gotten triggered in yet which I still think is a great place to have them. And on the DIA, I'm sorry, SPY, kind of looks a little bit like this. So just kind of what these lines look like. Something like this, at least I'm imagining it that way. And it's kind of ugly, but uh, we'll see if we start breaking out after tomorrow's Fed meeting. If there's a lot more bullish volume that starts coming in, I again will stay uh, more bullish than bearish on the overall markets. And the IWM, uh, we did gap down, but we have another very, very nice little white candle. So initially, um, you know, it was a kind of a scary gap for some people, but here's our bull pit spread. We'll not even look at the spread unless we close below 114.20. We have a ways to go before we close below there. Could it happen? Sure. One candle can change everything, but that's kind of my general thoughts on the market, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I do think we kind of still go a little bit higher. We consolidate, we trade sideways and uh, bullish to neutral. At least that's my thoughts. Do you guys have any questions, concerns, opposing views? Anything you want to look at broad market specifically? I do think the IWN looks pretty. Hmm. All right, Richard's good. Everyone else is good. All right. Well, today is Tech Giant Tuesday, and obviously there were so many interesting gaps today. So many interesting gaps. Um, it's gonna be very, very interesting to look at. Earnings are coming around their corner on the big stocks that are out there. You know, Amazon, Apple, uh, Netflix already happened. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take care of it. Let's go look at Apple first. And Apple, Here's kind of our current plan on Apple. So if you got triggered into your protective put today or yesterday, I think that's great. You know, here's your evening star reversal pattern on Apple. And really this is the exact plan. We already kind of looked at it earlier today. Uh, so as a reiteration, 
Um, if we gap down to the 104 area, look to go bullish. So I mean, if we gap down to here, somewhere, the same people who bought here, bought here, bought here, uh, bought back there, will probably try to buy again. If we gap up, this really could be a decent gap, especially if we clear 114. If we gap, let's say, well, let's put it 114.50. If we gap above 114.50, but below 120, it could be a really, really good gap. And if we gap all the way up here, it probably still would be a good gap, but anyone who did not sell uh, up here last time will probably wanna lock in a little bit of profit, take some profit off the table on Apple. So most people in Apple um, are getting into uh, either a collar over earnings. I really don't know what's gonna happen, but if it does gap down to here, we can have a really good time with some bull put spreads, put sales, maybe buying some stock. Um, it really depends on your plan, but I would say go ahead and start planning now what you want it to do. So when it does it, you're ready to go. Woo! Ready to do it. Amazon. Uh, Amazon, beautiful, beautiful little candle today. Uh, almost kind of looks like a flag pattern uh, off of this bullish move. So on Amazon, Newsom calls for a small gap down, which, what's up Yoav, which likely will be bought. And again, so we'll see what happens, but if it gaps down to anywhere really around here, um, yes, it will trap some people for sure, but if it does gap down and start bouncing, uh, I think that would be a um, that'd be great for some bull put spreads. I mean, tomorrow is Weekly's Wednesday, so we're going to have some really good setups. Uh, I think Amazon comes out on the 29th, so we're going to get a little bit of time. But some bull put spreads, some put sales, we'll kind of see how earnings shapes up. Very, very, very strong support. If that support gets broken, more than likely I'd be a little bit more bearish than bullish. And uh, we have a pretty decent resistance right here as well. So let me go ahead and extend this line. Can I extend it? I actually don't know. I know Motive Wave and Trade Navigator extends. I don't think that this extends lines. I'll just bring it out throughout there. Um, so if we gap up, let's gap up above 315 and some change. Um, could be some resistance right there that we can kind of coincide with, but it would be a retest gap anyway, but it'll be it'll be really, really interesting to see what, uh, what happens on Amazon. Greg says X is after, X earnings are after close of the day. All right. Beautiful. So I got a few to look at. Uh, I'm at the end of the day. Netflix isn't obeying the market at all right now. It's just going banana sandwich. It's just going. Wow. <laughs> Don't know what to say. It has not retested at all. At least not yet. Uh, I, if it does, I think that's going to be a great opportunity, right? So 420. If we pull back all the way to 420, I think that'd be stock market mana. That'd just be a gift. If we bounce off 420, we'd be and consider being a little bit more bullish than bearish on Netflix around that general area if we do pull back and bounce. RSI is at like 90, which is uh which is uh quite high. Right? 89.4585. That's that's up there. Exponential moving averages, uh really, really high. So, you know, it's a little bit of a sell-off, a little bit of a bounce. I think it'd be playing Bible. Might be able to get into a bull put spread on the bounce or something like that. So we'll see how that plays out. Google. Google, again, earnings this week. So happy that Brad's doing the morning trading room um, this week and that uh, Real Life Trading and Angie is allowing that to happen because you guys are loving that. I mean, all the emails I'm getting, these are the big, big, big name stocks um, giving a, you know doing the earnings morning announcement. I love it. Um, so, I, I, Brad, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, Patricia said, is that an Universal on Netflix? Let me go back before I look at Google. Um, no. No, not an Universal. Good gap, though. Very good gap. Retest gap of some kind. Let's see if we do this and let's do that and uh, be a little bit more bullish. Uh, okay. So there's Netflix. Let's go again, Google. And Google 
really would be phenomenally interesting if we do this, right? Something like that. So I think we do gap down slightly. Uh, Newsom calls for a small gap down on Google. Likely would be bought. And the reason I say that is because we've been just getting bought down in that area so many times. Uh, if we gap above 543, if we gap above 543, that's a bullish gap. Pretty much any bearish gap down I won't really play unless it's below 486. If it's below 46, it's below the support line, sure. Uh, at that point, I think we could consider some bearish, you know, some bearish retest gaps, more than likely. Uh, a little bit of a retest section. A little bit of a, a little bit of a retest section there. A little bit of a, a little bit of a bearish trade overall. Be more, be more bearish than bullish in general. <laughs> so, we'll see what's up. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say. We'll see what happens until it happens. Uh, it's just totally a 50-50 guess. Facebook. We looked at Facebook. I uh, Let's go see what, how AP did on this trade. How'd you do, Arthur? Mitigate your risk. Good trade, man. Good trade. So Arthur gave me some numbers. He entered uh, bearish. I think 75.99 had a stop above the high. Looking for this to happen. Uh, and it just simply didn't. That's all. A lot of bullish trades today. Um, I'm sorry. A lot of bearish retest stocks that just kept going up bullish. So here's my thoughts on uh, Facebook. Facebook earnings likely will gap down. 72.50 area, very, very good buying location. Here's your long-term moving averages. So if we gap down to the 200, that could be very pretty. If we gap up, let's clear 79 for a bullish entry, which is right about here. Uh, there's not a lot of room to work with there, but I'm seeing a lot of this pattern. And I forget who think, I think it was Catherine Zwick who said that, right? So if we get this, there could be some really interesting momentum coming out of a ugly, but interesting inverted head and shoulders pattern on a lot of stocks. I mean, Google has something very similar to that. You can see it right there on Facebook. Um, what was the other one you're looking at, Catherine? I forget exactly, but there was definitely one out there. So yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in general. But there you guys go. Um, good support. We'll see how it plays out. Tommy says I'm in Facebook puts that a sending wedge should break to the downside. Sending wedge, something like this. Tommy, is that what you're, that what you're kind of looking at? Pat says, what are you basing the likely gap down on? It's a pure 100% guess, Pat. Um, Facebook earnings are probably a little bit weak. They've been spinning a lot. Um, we gapped down pretty nicely the last earnings. It's really just a guess. It's a guess when it comes from earnings for me. <laughs> Pat, no, I'm 50-50. I'm I am right at, I think if I get 60%, I might just stop guessing and we can tell everyone that I'm a 60% guesser on earnings. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't really do that. But um, anyway, there you guys go. <laughs> right, Pat? Uh, Jeremy Newsom is 60% on earnings. That'd be funny. 60% on 12. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we'll see, but I would. I think this is a great opportunity to buy Facebook. If we gap down to there, uh, oh my gosh, that would be fun, fun, fun. Till the daddy took the T-bird away. Tommy says back from the 2013 wedge, December 2013. Wow, December. 13. Um, am I looking at it right, Tommy? I don't, 
Where are the, I guess this, is that what you're looking at? I said, yeah, now you're upper. Yeah, that'll be interesting. A lot of declining volume. I'll agree on that. Some declining volume here. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, that pullback, I think it'll definitely give us a good, um, it'll give us a good indication one way or another. But overall, I uh, I like it. Looks nice. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Bottom line, pulling back down to that would be really pretty. Pulling back down that 200, that'd be, in my opinion, that'd be nice. Um, okay, so we'll see. We'll see what happens on Facebook. I think that's very, very interesting, though. Uh, Alibaba. Baba will be fun. Nice little hammer today. Uh, is a nice little gap, retest gap. Earnings are right around the corner. So I deleted my little pink line. You guys remember the pink line? Looks something like this. Well, I'll try to draw it again. Looks something like that. Uh, well, at least similar to that. And that's kind of what we're doing, right? So we, we had the retest ca candles. Here are the retest. Here is the retest. And if earnings, we gap up. Uh, if we clear 105.42, that could be a pretty decent gap. And here's the, another example that I think Catherine Zuko is talking about. That we're having some patterns like that, right? So if we do get those gaps, that could be uh, really interesting. And and I will say this is kind of the time frame in the market where I look to make the most uh, money, which is unfortunate because I'll just be day trading. Um, but you know, mid February, March, April is usually my two or three best months of the year. At least one or one, one of the two of those months are definitely my best, and then usually October, November, that time frame. So. I'm not saying that I'm not saying I'm gonna do that again this year. I'm just simply saying it looks like a lot of things are consolidating. A lot of the tech stocks that were really, really high are kind of resting a little bit. And uh, if we do in fact break out, that'd be a little bit more bullish than bearish. GoPro, kind of you know, kind of a similar example. Tommy uh, was in calls, target 62. So we're getting a little bit of a retest today. Just a cute little retest, nice and quaint. Earnings is in mid-February. It's about a week, week and a half left on it. And uh, we start breaking kind of strongly above 53.48. I could see, you know, again, a little bit of a pattern like that. I, I agree. Um, Thomas says, I like GoPro action today as well. I do also. Kind of looks like a flag pattern. Here's your hourly chart. Really, really good gap down today right to a support. Uh, gap down, boom, and I think we're in a flag. I'm gonna go ahead and write that in because if we if we start gapping decently tomorrow, if we gap up tomorrow, nice flag pattern prior to days would be a retest day trade. There we go. I think that's what I think it's I think it's a little bit about it. Um, Thomas, it, oh, so and right here, you know, if we pull back to fifty one, well, we did pull back to fifty one, by the way. So you know, right here was a good move, but like, you know, let's see if we pull back to fifty one. We went a little bit lower, <laughs> but not much. Uh, put in there, so I think it'd be interesting. Um, let's see. Yep, Arthur, that's correct, man. That's all it is. That is all it is. So there's a lot of, I mean, there were so many gaps out there. I mean, it would literally take me three hours to go through all the gaps. INTC gap down today. Uh, beautiful retest gap. And really only kind of retested right there for maybe an R, R and a half, potentially. Um, you know, right now, there's a little bit of bearish volume just now coming in on INTC. Like literally just now, um, that would probably be the entry. Stop it! Been about there. I randomly don't hate that, but that's that is cutting it very very close to when I don't get into a trade. Let me look at this on the fifteen. Um. Uh, that doesn't look that bad. If you got a chance to catch that, good for you. I don't think I'm gonna play it. It's a little late in the afternoon for me, but that does look nice. 
just right under that white candle. Stop right about there. Um, I mean, it's not gonna get to the low of the day, but you know, it might make it to here. Anyway, Ed says INTC all three EMAs converge on the five minute. Yeah, so they they converged. Uh, we broke above it right here. We came back to the high of the day. Here's your high of the day, Ed. So a really, really good, you know, resistance, resistance, support, failed the support, retested, and now we're below all the moving averages right here on the five. We're below all the moving averages on the 15, on the hourly, on the daily. So the edge in the late afternoon would be a little bit more bearish and bullish. I'm not saying take the trade because it's, you know, getting, you're cutting it close. But yes, I mean, this is what a lot of stocks did in the afternoon. They, they really just never gave us any good retest signals. Procter & Gamble was another good gap this morning. Uh, it was a great retest gap. And Steven Jackson, you know, sneaked out an R on this guy. And that was really kind of the best thing to do. Microsoft, I got an R out of Microsoft, but that was it. Um, and Microsoft too, man, this is tempting. Right in the afternoon. Oh, this is so close. I, I think I'd have to wait. Mm. I, I really didn't plan it, so I guess I can't get in. I didn't plan for that late of an afternoon rollover. It is interesting, though. It might not work. We'll see. It might just be trapping some people who are really eager to go bearish. But either way, uh, Microsoft, in my opinion, was pretty much a perfect gap and go. Um, the daily candle wasn't quite white. Uh, it was kind of like a little bit of a doji-ish candle, but it definitely had a long lower wick. And the hourly, the 15, the five were white, and we cleared some very, very pretty pivots. So I took it as a gap and go under the under the one minute um, low over the highs, took it out. Cheryl told me to sit on my hands. You got it, Cheryl. Thanks for being my accountability, buddy. So I will wait. 150 million shares on Microsoft. So I am a little bit more bearish than bullish on Microsoft after this gap. I will agree. Um, so if we can draw some supports in here, I think that's kind of the next target, about 41, 42. Long-term moving averages, uh, we're below them. So I mean, it was just a really beautiful, beautiful gap. And uh, we'll see how we pause down the support and if we bounce. This is where Bill Gates got out of a lot of his shares, um, I think back at 42, not too long ago. So if we trade down to here, this could be a pretty decent buying opportunity. As bearish as this gap is, I think it'll sell off. People get really, really eager about it. And then everyone who missed this move on Microsoft uh, will probably be looking to get back in at some point uh, overall. So, But yeah, there was, damn, there was a lot of... A lot of gaps that just beat us up a little bit um, today as far as the retest. Uh, Yahoo. So Yahoo, we have earnings in the morning. So let's see. I want this. Oh, so that was the uh, afternoon trade from the other day. Okay, I got it. So if you are in um, the bullish trade from this morning star reversal, you probably you know are either getting into your collar or you know whatever it is for earnings, you know we'll kind of see what's going on. But here's what me here be my earning play. So if you're in a collar, let me let me know, let me know if anyone here feel free to type it in. You guys can type it in if you want. Uh, if you want me, if you have shares or anything you want me to look at, I want this to gap below forty six oh five. If we gap below forty six oh five bearish retest gap if we gap up above 49.85 good bullish gap and go uh, so there's some support right right near that 100 uh, we have some support approximately here. So that's the one that John Higgins was keeping his eye on for a swing trade. He was like, you know, you know if we trade up into that resistance, we really could fail. Uh, and which we, we might be, but again, earnings is right around the corner. So it really depends on what earnings is going to do on a lot of stocks to see how and if um, things are going to play out. But um, yeah, not too bad. 
Any questions on Yahoo? Earnings were today. I thought earnings were after the close today. One twenty-seven after close. Yeah. Yeah. Trading View. Uh, Trading View has it on date one twenty-seven. So today after close. So we shall see. Yahoo. I do like trading Yahoo. I'm pretty good at trading Yahoo day trading. I'm not that terrible. I might be like high sixty percent on Yahoo. I probably have to get actual records of that, but it's probably close. Anyway, um, let's go look at Amgen. I don't think this is a tech stock specifically, but that's a beautiful gap if it does. Oh my gosh. If we open below 151.61, beautiful gap. That would take out some really, really, really pretty supports. Really pretty. Would you guys agree? Take out the 100, that little gap right there. Um, the candles, the pivots, I mean, that's, that's quite pretty, quite pretty indeed. Yes, yes. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Um, what is Amgen? Is this like a biotech company? I keep forgetting what all these companies do. Amgen. Sounds like a cool name. Uh, let's see what a gap up. Gap up above 163. If we gap up above 163, bullish retest gap. Three D printing company, bio, biologic. Ah, okay. One of the biggest and oldest. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good little bounce right here off the one hundred. So we bounce off the one hundred twice, three. Yeah, if we break that one hundred, that'll be a beautiful gap. Uh, I think they're gonna gap up. Newsome calls for a gap up. So we shall see what that does. Uh, EA Games. EA trading some decent little fibs. So we broke the 48.15. Uh, we definitely pounded that, pounded that out as a really good resistance slash target. Those are some beautiful fibs on Electronic Arts. I'm going to draw. I'm going to keep this fib in there. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'll make this smaller. Ooh, it's tiny. Okay, I'm going to clone that. I guess it's right here. Oh, I don't want to clone that. I want the one that goes upside down. Okay, let's do this one and put that here. I just want to get, I just want to keep an eye on the, this is a great fib range. It's almost like predicting the future on that fib. That's a beautiful one. Okay, so there's a decent fib range. So from there, we could measure here to here. That would be a very interesting pullback. Um, let's see here on EA Games. Slightly bearish gap today. The hourly chart. Hmm. Get below this wick, trapping some people for sure. The daily chart, we're trapping some people for sure. I would really like a gap down below 45. A gap down below 45 would be the best bearish retest. A gap up would be bullish. But be cautious, CAU, cautious with it because trend is already so steep. A 
There we go. That's just kind of what I'm thinking. Um, EA Games by the bounce looks like a breakout retest. Yeah, depending on how. So here's the. This is definitely a good breakout right there. If it pulls back far enough, absolutely. Um, if it does, yeah. If it if it pulls back enough. By the bounce around 43 for a swing. So 43 is kind of this level, approximately there. So if we pull back to the 100, uh, we can re we've respected the 100 pretty nicely, right there, right there, right there. Uh, really, really strong trend. You know, if we pull back down to here and get some bouncing, I think it'd be pretty decent. Tommy said, "I'm out of ACT." ACT, all right. Active is, okay. I don't know when earnings is, but he's getting out. That was a good play, brother. Good little move. All right, cool. So ACT, Tommy is out. Um, it's a pretty decent target looks like okay uh, Apple Amgen Yahoo EA uh, JNPR reporting earnings Juniper Networks Juniper hmm this um, Juniper reminded me of Jupiter which reminded me <laughs> of that movie that Matthew McConaughey just did, but for some reason I cannot remember the name of it. What was the name when they went space traveling? It's just recent. Like I, I'm really, I feel bad that I don't remember it. Interstellar, yeah. I liked that movie. It was a long one. But man, the range of emotions in that film was radical. It was a long film at least worth watching once or twice. I liked it. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely good to see. <laughs> um, oh, Jupiter is sending. Now, Jupiter is sending. Mm, I'm scared. I'm, I, think, I think you're right, Brad. I think like that other movie, I'm going to go in there with very, very, very low expectations. And uh, very low to so see if that, that, that movie can meet my expectations. Brad says, it looks like a, star, a bad Star Wars remake, but I'm going to see it anyways. <laughs> hey, man. It's all good. I feel you. Okay, so a gap down below 21. A gap... Gap down below 21 would be bearish. Um, 23, hmm, 23, 24. A gap above 24, 24 would be bullish. There we go. Saying to, I'm gonna rewatch Interstellar. Favorite director of all time. Yeah, man, it was solid. Uh, you know what? One movie I haven't seen that I probably should. Talking about space travel. Uh, what was it? Cowboy astronaut. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Was it cow farmer astronaut? Cowboy astronaut? Space cowboys? No, not space cowboys. <laughs> Good, you guys are trying to read my mind. Not Space Cowboys. That's the that's the one with the three the three uh, Tommy Lee and everyone. It's like the <laughs> no, not Cowboys and Aliens. No, 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 no. It's the movie about the the really rich farmer who builds a rocket ship like in his barn, and NASA tries to sue him. The astronaut farmer is that? I think that's the name of the movie, isn't it? Let me Google this really quick. 
I haven't seen that, and that looks kind of cool. But maybe, yeah, the astronaut farmer. Three stars on IMBD. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes get it at 57. That's not that bad. Well, average to Midland movie, I guess. Okay. There we go. All right, I might check it out. John Carter. Now, let me just say this while I'm on this tangent. There's a lot of people that don't like John Carter. I liked that movie. I'm not fully competent as to why. A lot of people hate it, like Chris Tom, apparently. <laughs> a lot of you guys aren't the... I liked that film. You know, it's... I don't know. I still can't fully figure out why. But it was it's a fun movie. I, I don't know. I don't know. Not sure. BA, I would like BA to gap of 138.48. A gap above 138.48 would be bullish. A gap down below 128. A gap down below 128 would be more bearish than bullish. If you are in shares, great time for a collar. And by great time, I mean great time. And by great time, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there, though. Because, I mean, this is... I just like looking at the charts and pretending that I had enough money to trade them. The covered calls. Like, I would love to trade all the stocks. All of them. Everything. Do you guys ever feel that way? Don't you guys have to kind of fight that urge sometimes? I just want to be in everything. Every one of them. All, all millions. Just all of them at once. Definitely an urge I have to fight. Um, there would there would be my uh, my my collar be a protective put covered call. So there you go. <laughs> Brad Reed says, "By great time, you mean in the next twenty one minutes?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great time. Uh, Chris Thompson, do look at Dream Mountain Coffee Roasters. Literally my next one down. Do you guys have any other questions about this one? <clears throat> Arthur Pierce, anyone seen the movie Paul? The alien movie with Seth Rogen? No. Stayed away from that one. Stayed away from that one, but I, I heard bad things about it, but again, I don't know. Fifth Element was good. I like Simon Pegg too, but that, that one did look a little rough. It looked a little rough around the edges. We shall see. Uh, okay, let's go check out Green Mountain Cough Roasters. You guys are good on Boeing. Green Mountain. Green Mountain. Do you got any spreads or anything, Chris? Or looking to do one or what? <clears throat> Earnings not too far. Right at the 200. Today's a pretty decently bearish gap. Man, we just did get out of that spread in time, didn't we? Uh, long-term moving averages on the... Wow, well, I didn't really want to look at the hourly long terms. Uh, we did gap and we, we trapped some interesting... You know, Here's your evening star. Ooh, that's close. Like This is the hourly candle that will decide what Green Mountain Coffee Roasters does. This is the one. This is the candle that decides what it does. Stock market opera. When are we going to that show? Uh, we closed below 124.58 on Green Mountain. I'd be a little bit more bearish than bullish. Chris, since there's a lot of things on this one that look a little bearish to me, case in point, this gap, lower highs, this support, Evening star, evening star, bearish gap, potential double top thing. Uh, I'd wait on the um, 
spread, especially since earnings is kind of next week. So we shall see. I think we'll wait. Uh, there's a lot of support there. You know, if we close, awesome. But if we bounce, let, let's get that bouncing candle first. And we, we will see what's going on. Uh, there's Green Mountain Cough Roasters X. Uh, X has earnings. X, um, I thought X already had earnings. I guess it has to do. Oh, X, uh, if we gap down on X, I'd probably buy it. A gap down likely could fade, fill the gap. If we trade to, uh, I'll say if we gap to, if we, if X gaps to 1828. A gap up, be cautious since the trend is so bearish, but likely would be a retest Gap above, uh, yada, yada, 2326. Okay. There we go. Patricia said, what was the end of day trigger price on Green Mountain Coffee Roasters? 124 something. 124.23. So that's X, uh, AKS, AKS had an, a cute little gap. I like it gap down, but it didn't gap down. So it really didn't do much at all. So we're definitely above that little pivot. Uh, it is a retest gap. It's kind of a, I mean, you had some opportunity to take some retests maybe, but it was kind of pathetic. You know, here's your retest maybe, there's a retest maybe, but that's a little bit about it. Um, hopping over at the end of the day, look at Caterpillar. Here's my end of day trigger on Caterpillar, kind of like a high wave candle looking thing. Just kind of waiting to see what it ends up doing. You know, you're at a really, really, really strong support. You, uh, I, mean, I think that's kind of enough said, right? Really good support. Don't know what's gonna happen until it happens. Bracket trade that beast. High wave candle, indecision, big volume, a lot of divergence going on down here on Caterpillar. So, yeah, let's keep that in mind. Uh, price line. So, we said we're going to look at price line at the end of the day. Um, the bearish end of day trigger on price line was 101.920. Uh, it's about to close below that price. With today's gap, since it gapped below the wick of yesterday's candle, and it's trade below. If we go into the hourly chart on Priceline, let's take a look at this. Uh, it definitely traps some people for sure. Really good bearish volume the last hour. If you get triggered into this trade bearish right now, 245, um, that makes sense to me. Um, I will place this as a stop. 1055.15. What do you think, Paul, Aaron's, and Tommy? You guys both like price line and trade a lot. Am I kind of on par with what you guys are thinking? Maybe. Hopefully. Kind of. Because that's, man, that, uh, yeah, let's look at this on a weekly. Paul, you're on the phone a lot, dude. <laughs> um, here's your support broke support volume declining almost kind of like a flag pattern uh, you're below the long term moving averages on a weekly chart exponential moving averages on a weekly chart have all crossed bearish the daily chart where, that were below all the moving averages they've crossed bearish long term moving averages are bearish RSI, um, you know, it's low, there's not really any divergence. We got, I don't, I, I like it. It doesn't look mega bullish, that's for sure. It's good risk reward. 
MACD divergence. MACD divergence. There is some. There is some. It's very slight, though. I mean, it's. I agree. There is some divergence there. Now, I'll put it this way, Tina. If we do this, do this, and we roll over, and we make a lower low, and we break this trend line, um, divergence is over. It's no longer valid. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, but we'll keep a close eye on that one. So that's Priceline. That's kind of my thoughts on it. So look at GoPro, Baba. Let's go look at Box. Box pulling us down a little bit. So here's your hourly charts on BOX. And if you're feeling froggy, um, this is an IPO. So if Box starts breaking from my, my little bit more aggressive traders out there in the world, uh, if you took the bearish trigger at 2157, stop would kind of go right about here. 2195. 15 minutes, a uh, bunch of black candles, which is great. So that trade sideways in here for a little bit, either trigger or pop. And, um, you know, keep your eyes on it. Keep your eyes on BOX for a day trade tomorrow. You know, because if it does this, does this, and does this, uh, that could be a nice little move. Um, I want to give a giant shout out to uh, Dan the Man Walsh on ZIOP. Probably one of the better calls of his career. That was phenomenal, brother. Text me about this one the other day, um, yesterday. Gorgeous gap, boom, pulls in. Nice candle yesterday, pulled into the hourly chart. I think we just liked it so much because it just trades the target so fast. 793 by 743 is a 50 cent risk. Uh, it's about a one to four, one to three and a half risk reward ratio. So he said he exited a quarter of his positions at the target. I think that's a good play. Um, I think it'll pull back just a tad tomorrow, maybe a little bit the next day. Tomorrow is the FOMC meeting, so keep that in uh, keep that in the back of your mind. Tomorrow's gonna be weekly Wednesday, so at the end of the day, we're gonna have a lot of fun with some weekly spreads, um, seeing what they're gonna do, seeing what they're gonna shape up as. DIA high wave candle, so we could shape up into a morning star tomorrow. If we do start breaking the lows on these gaps, I mean that'll be really, really, really interesting. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. How many times have I said that? I feel like I've said that a million times. And uh, when I say a million times, I probably literally truthfully mean 147 times, give or take. Anything you guys want to look at? So we got 10 more minutes left. We look at tons of... Tech stocks, tons of earnings for tomorrow. What else you guys need? SLW, thank you, Jason. SLW, uh, silver and gold and a lot of things look like they're they're having a flag. This looks like a flag pattern to me, and it looks like we're making a higher high and a higher low today. Exit out of a potential flag. Do you have any targets for me, Jason? Anything that you're in? <clears throat> Exit of a potential flag. There's a support, uh, um, you know, under this candle. ABX is doing well. Gold's doing well. NUGT is doing well. There's a lot of there's a lot of movers out there. It kind of metals. The dollar index looks like it kind of might be rolling over. So we'll see. Uh, let's do a really quick fib, Jason, to see if we can get some targets in here. This candle, ooh, nice. 25.15 and 27-ish. What can I be my targets? So 24.14 is good. I think it might have a little bit more room left to go, honestly. <clears throat> That's kind of the high. I think it has a little bit more room to go. 
And it says, is SLW good for a collar? Um, I would agree for sure if you bought it earlier. It really depends on the price point though. Ed, like where you bought it. I kind of go with the rule that if you bought a stock and it's higher than where you bought it, it's always a good time for a collar. Uh, you're looking to trigger around 24-14. Okay. Um, I can see that. I mean, it's it's close, Jason. So I'd wait. If you're doing 24-14, I'd probably like wait for a little bit of a pullback tomorrow and then try to buy that bounce. Uh, but, Ed, to answer your question, yes, SLW is a fun stock for a collar. Right now, since it broke through this resistance... It broke out, retested it, and we got a flag pattern. We made a higher high today. We had a good volume. I would wait for the covered call. I would wait uh, and see if we can trade up. Because ultimately, really, 27 is a solid target for SLW. If we hit 27, you can get into a collar here, protective put there, and then you're just printing money on SLW. Jason, keep me posted, brother, on what you end up doing. S-A-M, Sam, Boston Beer Company. Uh, this thing just kind of moving nicely as well. A lot of bearish volume yesterday, apparently. That's crazy talk. Uh, here's your flag pattern. Flag pattern. If we do not continue bullish, likely a pullback to happen. Maybe even to the 50 EMA, Tommy Manet is in bearish. That's really all I've got on SAM because we're at, uh, and we've moved very, very nicely, right? Here's a nice little pattern. We broke out of that. Uh, here's a great pop. This is definitely a flag. You know, the trend's bullish, right? Very good bullish trend. All-time highs, we broke out of resistances, boom, 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 boom. Let's see what happens. I agree with you, uh, Tom. If we do start pulling back, this is a flag. A lot of volume came in yesterday. If we start breaking the low and we don't break in the direction of the trend, it should continue. Lita wants to look at CLDX. Celadex Therapeutics. Celadex, so uh, according to this chart, had a more bullish than bearish entry at 1977. Close above CLDX, really good volume, earnings are in March, so we have a lot of time. If I was in CLDX personally, I would take a stop and move it probably, I don't know, let's just go ahead and put it at break even. 1973. I would put a protective put trigger uh, below the wick of the 122 candle. So just in case we do get some strong drops, that's where I would start buying some protective puts. Uh, otherwise, I think the trend looks great. Phenomenal volume there, phenomenal volume there. Exponential moving averages are curving up. Uh, let's see if it goes higher, pull back, and then bounce. That's really about it. Trend looks good. Ultimate target, 28.33. It's going to take some time to get up there. But that kind of volume coming in, a lot of white candles. You know, we probably will get a small pullback soon, but that bounce, buying that bounce could be really pretty. Uh, so there's CLDX. Yo, I was asking about gold. Um, 120, 121 bull put spread, 121, 120 expiring this week. I would wait till after the FOMC meeting, you have, honestly. I agree with you, man. Great candle, pretty gap, good location. But, uh, man, who knows, <laughs> right? FOMC meeting tomorrow, and you have that 100 simple moving average the, on the weekly. I pulled that up just a little bit ago. Uh, here's your long-term moving average on a weekly chart, and we're coming right into the 100. So what we could do is we could pause here for a moment. Boom, boom, and something like that. So I'd wait on the bullpit spread on gold. 
I agree with you. Some very, very interesting patterns down here in gold. Very interesting. I know for a fact that this trapped a lot of bearish traders because there was a lot of, uh, you know, people that were bearish on gold, including yours truly. Gold and silver. Didn't know how far it was going to drop or could have dropped, but it uh, didn't really drop that far. Silver made a little bit lower than gold did. Is this a rally um, that gold and silver could go higher? Honestly, potentially, yeah. Yeah, it really could be. I mean, because the thing is, I gotta, I gotta be able to switch, you know, my perspectives on the markets. You, you can't, you can't go in with the same perspective for years, right? Doesn't make any sense. I can't just be bearish on gold forever because I thought it was gonna break down, do this, and fail. Well, it didn't fail. So once it stopped failing, I had to kind of change. You gotta change perspectives a little bit. <laughs> Richard says, why not? Kramer does. Ah, eh, you know. You know. Higgins said, I got triggered in a GLW. I At the close of today or yesterday or what? John Higgins in trade. Earlier today. Good for you, John. That's what I wanted to hear. That is what I wanted to hear. Okay, so Higgins is in. GLW, perfect. Um, I'll look at the broad market. Do you guys have anything else? So SPY, that's a weekly. Here's the daily. So daily high wave candle. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I guess we can just go ahead and put, since we look at the SPY a lot, we'll love an inside day candle on Tuesday. Well, didn't get an inside day candle. High wave candle with a pretty decently bearish gap. Uh, hoping, I guess is a good word. Hoping for a morning star reversal to bounce and break in trend. Honestly, could just keep going sideways. I'm not afraid of sideways, ladies and gentlemen, for another for another month. I know it's going to sound crazy, but uh, yeah, something something like this. Well, except bigger. This is really big. This is a lot of volatility up here. Um, something like this. I'm not afraid of this or this. So just keep that in mind. High wave candle, definitely more bearish gap today. I'm very excited to see what happens tomorrow. I think IWM for, finished out pretty strongly, and that's the only spread that I'm in uh, is IWM, pretty far away from it. So well, there's gonna be some things that got that go pretty crazy for that to go wrong, but uh, that definitely could happen. It's not that far in the future. February expiration is the 15th, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe it's the 20, 20th. I think it's the 20th. So that'll be that's the time frame for that spread. So we'll see. Kenneth said, regarding Sam, normal volume is significantly below 1 million. Do you consider trading a stock like this if it has a volume spike? I probably won't get in Sam personally. Kenneth, that's a great question. I mean, it is a counter trend trade. I mean, it, it would be pretty expensive for me to trade it anyway. It's $300 stock. 325 Huge volume spike, very, very low volume. So options overall, Kenneth, probably won't be that great. Open interest, you know, really won't be that huge. I mean, if you're buying, you're buying one, two, maybe three contracts. Uh, now you could always short, you know, the stock itself, but it's gonna be pretty pricey. But uh, with lower volume like that, option spreads are gonna be a little wild. Open interest is gonna be a little rough, so I'd probably just kind of wait if it was me personally. Just my two cents. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? That was a fun Tech Giant Tuesday, man. Today flew. Flew by. Uh, Patricia, Apple earnings are going to be after the bell. It is a nice bearish candle. Hopefully you guys bought some protective puts. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what she does. Ladies and gentlemen, have a phenomenal evening. I will see you guys tomorrow. And until then, remember, love life. Live life and trade it. See you guys.